Many thanks. Uh, ladies and uh, gentlemen, I think that uh, uh, most of us uh, have uh, uh, already used voucher. Uh, if not, uh, during the walk later, you can certainly see vouchers in a tank station or in every shop. Uh, well, I, I took a few examples. Let's say that's voucher, this is an example of vouchers, uh, uh, but in, in UK. Or um, other examples of uh, vouchers, uh, these are, well, uh, let's say a nice meal or a nice weekend in uh, Venice. And uh, normally it's small boxes and you see within the boxes when it's one sheet of paper and there is a document when there are uh, four uh, important sentences uh, there is a individual number of the voucher there is an activation code there is a limit of validity and there is a reference to the general uh, contractual conditions. And uh, uh, another example of vouchers, uh, this is because that was on the website of the tourist office of Trier. This is a voucher in order to participate to a visit of the Porta Nigra, but this is for uh, later uh, today. Uh, well, um, but we, we have uh, since uh, 27 June 2016, we have a directive. Well, it does not happen so many times. Uh, uh, and, uh, well, uh, why a directive? Uh, because, uh, well, uh, if you read the preamble, uh, there is a directive because uh, the current directive, it's uh, not uh, sufficiently clear. I don't know why. Um, well, uh, it's putting in danger the functioning of the internal market. Well, very interesting. If you have some examples, please tell me that this evening. I would be interested to, to know, to have practical examples. Um, also, in 2007, there has been a public consultation. I think there was, if you remember, Jean-Claude, was between 25 to 30 replies. And I'm not sure that all the participants were knowing something about vouchers. I participate to, this, uh, to the reply, and I'm quite sure that at this time, I did not know nothing about vouchers. Uh, well, uh, that was also very important in 2007. The VAT package was not yet implemented. And, well, the VAT package is a very important date because this is a simplifica uh, the simplification of the rules of place of supply on the B2B operation, of course. So at that time, there was probably vouchers, the rules of place of supply, that was an important issue. Um, and there were, a, of course, a lot of court cases, a lot of them. But uh, except perhaps the case Le Barra, none of them that was about vouchers, that was mainly discount vouchers. That was not the vouchers that we're going to speak today. Uh, well, um, why a directive? Oh, yes. Uh, to distinguish vouchers from payment instruments. Uh, yes, yes, but well, if you are looking on the directive about payment services, this directive excludes expressly the paper-based vouchers, like my, my box, my wonder box, my bongo, uh, this is a paper. So uh, it's already excluded uh, from, from the financial services. Let's come with, let's say, the important uh, issues. Uh, yes, the telecom sector, indeed. Uh, the telecom sector, the vouchers, that was a serious problem. Because, well, for example, with telecom, you can, you, with your mobile, purchase a bus ticket uh, in Paris or a parking place uh, in Brussels or to play uh, uh, gambling uh, from Malta. Well, um, and then you receive the bill from the telecom company. And of course, the telecom company was confronted uh, with uh, uh, 
um, nightmare concerning the place of supply for VAT, but also other taxes. Uh, you understand that the German company was probably not so happy uh, to, uh, to, to, be, to intervene in one of the English, of Irish, of Belgium taxes on, of, on gambling. So there was a very serious problem for the telecom sector. Uh, then a practical solution has been found uh, for specifically the telecom sector by an uh, interpretative regulation interpreting the VAT directive. And uh, this interpretative regulation made a distinction between one side, the uh, intermediary acting in his own name, but on behalf of the provider, acting in his own name on behalf of a provider. This will happen very frequently in this presentation. Uh, and, uh, and then this supplier is supplying, is deemed to supply himself the good or the services, but it is the service. Or you have a second category, uh, a provider is explicitly um, indicated as the supplier by that taxable person. It means that the person, the telecom company, is not deemed to supply directly the service, but it's indicated on the invoice that, that the actual supplier, it's another party, a subcontractor, uh, and this person supports the liability of possible VAT registration abroad of payment of special taxes. This is a very fundamental issue that has been solved by the telecom companies. They have to adapt most of their contract. Uh, and I will give you a very uh, practical example. You have uh, ABC uh, supply. You have A, who is the actual supplier, the provider, the supplier of the goods of the service. B, an intermediary, and C, the final customer. Actually, B. They're doing nothing except to lend their name. But the physical supply, the intellectual content, is made directly between A to C. And B is only lending his name. And for VAT purpose, uh, in 1967, uh, they have introduced a fiction, not in France, France that was much, much later, uh, a fiction in order not to break, to break the chain of deduction, they considered by fiction that B was deemed to be a supplier and that was a supply from A to B and to B to C even if B was doing almost nothing. Then you have what we call disclosed intermediary. And this is a totally different operation. The disclosed B, the intermediary, is rendering a service to A, and he says to A, well, I will bring you in contact with C, the final customer and uh, you will contract, you A, we, you will contract and issue possibly invoices directly to C. But the intermediary B is only supplying a service to A. This is the disclosed intermediary. 
we found, well, uh, and then uh, the, for the, the telecom sector, it's functioning as follows. The telecom company is, let's say, uh, well, collecting the money, supplying the service to the cable, but they say, the telecom, we are rendering a service to the subcontractor or to the retailer, and the service is directly supplied from A to C. We, telecom company, we are just collecting the money, we are just issuing an invoice for the account of the retailer, but we do not take any liability in the supply from A to C. This is the simplification measure for the telecom sector. They had to write again, to draft again all the contracts. But well, uh, this is a simple solution. So uh, we have a voucher directive Mr. Haponi spoke this morning, well, uh, that was, uh, uh, we have a voucher directive, and uh, the first article of this voucher directive is a definition of a voucher, and a voucher is what? It is uh, an instrument, yes, maybe everything. It's an obligation to accept this instrument as consideration. This, it's, it's not for free, it's a payment instrument. Uh, for a supply, and uh, uh, the suppliers are uh, indicated on the instrument itself or in the documentation. Uh, there are one or more supplier, and uh, uh, well, uh, you can uh, ask, you can purchase such kind of vouchers uh, in every, uh, let's say, uh, booking in every shop, in every tank station. Of course, the tank station will not sell you a weekend in Venice, but they are acting as intermediary. And then the, VAT direct, the directive provides distinction between two different categories of vouchers. First, single purpose vouchers. Uh, and then the single purpose voucher is, uh, uh, well, uh, as the following characteristic, in addition to be uh, that the fact that uh, the, the supply and the supplier are indicated, is the place of supply of the goods and services and the VAT are mentioned are known at the moment of the issuance of the voucher. So the place of supply and the value. What's happening if you have a voucher which is valid, let's say, and then a change of rate? What's happening? Uh, well, but, well um, this is what we call single purpose voucher. There is a second category, the multi-purpose vouchers. Of course, the same, the, supply of, uh, the supplier are indicated, but at the time of the issuance, you don't know the place of supply and that. Or, okay. Then, then, it's coming, there is a, a provision of the article that it took me a few days to understand. It's not really easy. And please correct me if I understand wrongly this provision. The taxable transfer of a single purpose voucher. Well, you the single purpose voucher, you know, the, the, the place of supply and the VAT rate are known. You have, the, the, the directive says, uh, this is the transfer of a single purpose voucher in our name as such is regarded as a supply. So you understand that the intermediary 
issuing a single purpose voucher to a final customer is deemed to be a undisclosed intermediary. And then, what is the situation of the Axel supplier to this intermediary? And then the court says, uh, no, not the court, the, the directive say, this is operation is deemed to be a supply. So you have to supply A to B and B to C. This is but each operation is a taxable transfer like a normal transfer. It's the normal commissionaire fiction. <coughs> then you have the transfer of a single purpose voucher in the name of another person, this is a disclosed intermediary. This is the two kinds of operation. This is the way on the, on the way the, the single uh, purpose of vouchers, the undisclosed intermediary works. It's supply from A to B and to B to C. Nothing new. This is what the directive says. Uh, unfortunately, there are many other things. And where are you to find it? Well, you have to find it just in the general rules of the directives. Well, uh, like uh, for the place of supply, well, uh, it's the place of supply of the underlying operation. If you have a parking ticket uh, parking of a bus, you will have to, to have to look at the place of supply of the bus trip or, or the parking. Taxation of exemption, you have to go to have to look to the underlying operation. Taxable base, the same. Deduction, the same. So, uh, taxable transfer of a multi-purpose voucher. And then the transfer of a multi-purpose voucher by the final customer, let's say by the hotel to the final customer, it's a normal taxable supply. But of course, but the hotel is not paid by the final customer. The final customer pays the intermediary of, of one of the intermediary in the chain. So, well, uh, the, final, the, the final customer gives the voucher to the hotel and then it, it is, it does not know how much money the hotel received, how much, what is the commission of the different intermediaries. Well, for the remuneration of the intermediary, the, what is the taxable base, and this is, let's say, a little bit innovative. It's not innovative because it's in the practice. No, uh, it's practice for, for years and years. There are uh, French decision, there, there was the Belgium decision, this is the way the business is working. And they say, well, we are charging that on our commission, on what we have in the pocket after the payment of the hotel, of the payment of all the intermediaries above in the chain. So there is two different operations. You have the final supply, in this case, from A to C, and the taxable base is the price which is generally mentioned of the face value of the voucher. And then you have the different intermediaries. And the intermediary is supplying B, is supplying a service to A. And A, well, most of them will see these supplies will, this, this intermediary will be based, for example, in Ireland, and you will have a cross-border supply of services 
from B to A on the margin received attributed to the intermediary. And this is probably, well, it is not new. This is practical. This is that you can observe in most of the contract because these business have, well, are working. Everybody knows exactly what they have to do and what, how the contract is working. And, uh, well, sometimes, sometimes it may happen, it may happen that, uh, uh, well, uh, somebody does not understand how it works. And I will give you an example of a, an invoice. This case was issued by Bongo, Bongo in Ireland. And he was uh, issuing a, an invoice, let's say, trail. And uh, well, the hotel uh, was asking me, had difficulties to know. I received an invoice from Ireland and they paying me. And well, should I charge VAT? Well, of course, but uh, you have a look to your contract. And uh, uh, it's uh, clear, well, let's say this is the issuer of the multipurpose venture is sending an invoice to the hotel and he says, well, uh, I supplied a voucher for a night of hotel, uh, 100, and you will have to charge this night of hotel that included to the final customer, but my commission is 25. And according to the contractual provision, well, my service is to you, hotel, 25. And so please apply a reverse charge in Germany because, well, uh, we are not established in the same country. Okay. But this is, this is what things happen in practice daily. Sometimes some people do not understand how it works, but well, it's, it's not common, but, well, it works. And uh, then, well, again, multipurpose watch. Well, you, this is everything what you have in the uh, directive. So you have to find in the VAT directive solutions to practical problems. For example, the place of supply. The place of supply, this time, don't forget that you have two different operations. You have the underlying operation, which is on rule, and the commission, the intermediary. And this is apply the different rules. So you may have two different rules of place of supply. You may have taxation and exemption. Well, the, you may have, for example, for some vouchers concerning, for example, gambling, Oh, in some countries, it's still uh, that exempt. Uh, in others, not anymore. But uh, then, but the intermediation service in this kind of system is always taxable. Taxable base. This is explained in the directive. Taxable base for the intermediary. It's only the commission, and the taxable base from the retailer to the final consumer, well, uh, it's the price, including all the commission supported before this stage of production. The same for the uh, deduction uh, and, uh, well, the deduction of, for, the for the deduction intermediation always deductible because it's always taxable and for the underlying operation it depends if it's taxable or not. Well, it's, let's say it's practical. It works like this. Um, well, and when you make some, some simulation, so you see that this system 
works for years. It's perfectly neutral on the internal market. You may have a voucher issues voucher in different issues of in different uh, countries. Well, the consumer is always supporting that in the country where the under the initial operation takes place. So there is absolutely no distortion of. Uh, no distortion of competition in the internal market. The directive says, well, uh, we should, we should uh, this new directive shall apply to vouchers only after 31st December 2018. Well, uh, I, I think that's, well, why? Because actually it's already working like this for years. So, uh, you should not say that it shall work like this much later. No, it's working. So, um, yeah, there is another problem. It's not applicable to tickets. It's not applicable to transfer of certificates of ownership. Well, uh, that was not my intention to spend too much time to tickets, uh, first of all, because it's not part of the directive uh, vouchers. Uh, secondly, because this is a perfect nightmare. Uh, let's suppose, uh, well, uh, let's suppose uh, we are all organizing uh, uh, a three days seminar in a nice place in France. Uh, according to France, um, well, of course, well, a tax expert uh, a seminar of three days in, uh, let's say, in uh, Strasbourg. Uh, the place of supply will be uh, France, of course, because it's less than eight days, including the weekend. Uh, but in Belgium, the Belgian authorities will say, sorry, um, this is uh, taxable in Belgium because this is more than one day. Uh, and then the German says, oh, well, it's advertised in all Europe. Uh, but, uh, well, it's probably, oh, yes, oh, no, that's probably France. Uh, but the, the UK would say, oh, no, it's the place of the customer, the same as the Italian. So, anyway, well, it was not my intention to enter in this discussion because, unfortunately, uh, well, uh, this is a pure nightmare. You have there, you have serious problem concerning the internal market. Of course, it's much more interesting to go to, to Italy that on the, uh, in, in Ventimiglia than in Nice uh, or in Cannes for some kind of seminars or the reverse. But, uh, you know, uh, there is also a serious problem. Uh, and I, I do not want to enter in this discussion because uh, for the supply of a ticket to a football match of a song contest. Then, you know, you are issuing a ticket. Is this ticket a single purpose voucher? Yes, you know the, the, who is the supplier, you know, you know certainly the VAT rate. Is this ticket a single purpose voucher? Yes, probably yes, sir. well. Uh, so, well, uh, but you know, these tickets, I don't know the French situation or the situation in other places, but they are uh, sold in uh, via internet, and you have uh, uh, a list of, uh, for some kinds of uh, events, uh, we don't know what's an event, but for some kinds of events of song, um, you have a list of uh, suppliers who are... <laughs> Uh, selling this kind of ticket at two times, three times, ten times the price in other countries, uh, but never in the, they're selling the, the tickets in their own name. But, uh, well, uh, I'm not sure that uh, they are applying the VAT in the country where the event is taking place. Uh, I asked once to the Belgium administration why they had not 
ask the support of the Dutch authorities in order to stop such kind of fraud? Well, uh, I never received an answer. Well, probably they have other priorities. But this is, this is a serious uh, problem. Tickets. But the problem is that we don't know where is the place of supply of an event. But the practical solution is that, uh, well, uh, actually, when my, I do not like football, but my son is like football, they receive a voucher, and then at the day that they are going to the, the football match, then they receive the ticket. And then you can see this is a multi-purpose voucher, and then, well, there is a possibility to apply the multi-purpose voucher rule. Well, but to know that it's not the case. And another issue that I do not want to speak about it, but, well, this is a very practical issue, and certainly with the Brexit, it will become a much more serious issue, this is, uh, let's say, a company who is selling a certificate of value of, let's say, X kilo of, of gold. This gold is not yet produced. It will be available within six months, one year. But I issuing a claim, a ticket, uh, concerning uh, that you have the right within a year to come to my warehouse and to receive one kilo gold and you can in between uh, well uh, transfer this title representative of a kilo of gold uh, and then you can make uh, uh, a lot of transfer of it. Normally, this is a taxable operation. Um, this is normally, in UK, you have the London Metal Exchange, which is, you have a stock exchange concerning this operation. But again, and this is what's not the topic of my purpose, but if we are using the concept developed by the directive of undisclosed intermediary, we can arrive to practical solution. Let's suppose you are A, the producer of gold. They are issuing a ticket, a claim for gold, and then this, it's a service. This is, is a service, according, I don't know, I, I think in 16 of the, the direct, I don't know exactly anymore. The, this is a service, so you make a transaction about service. And then finally, D acquires the ticket, the, the, the claim, and then it comes to A, please give me one kilo of gold. And so they're making an exchange of one service and a good. This is... When I, when I explain that, my colleagues say, well, oh, it's again the views of the Belgium authorities. Oh, it's again the views of the German authorities. Well, I'd say just no, uh, this is possibly, I just wanted to explain that this directive vouchers has not brought, as there are no solution, but they are used, they are using concept in the VAT directive which can be used for practical solution to tickets to other operation. And perhaps it's uh, evidence that uh, all that system contains uh, internally a lot of solution, which are, we, 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 can, we, can, uh, we can apply perfectly uh, to a practical issue and uh, that uh, this is a system which is strong, robust, and uh, possibly, uh, well, 
uh, and uh, perfectly compatible with an internal market. And we should, uh, I hope that we should not abolish uh, too soon because actually when you see such kind of complex issues, which function daily, uh, well, uh, this is an excellent uh, system. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.